Hey guys, Brandon Woolen with CCM Magazine. Today we are hanging out at the Goatee offices with Ryan Stevenson. What's up, man? What's going on, man? It's a pretty big day for you. The day we're sitting here is album release day. It's album number four. Abel is out today. What do you want people to uh, know about this album when they f- can finally give it a listen here over the weekend? Man, I hope that they just know the heart of Jesus, honestly, the heart of a good father. I feel like this whole record has just been a process and a journey for me of really at this stage of of my life in my 40s, like discovering that for the first time uh, as an adult, as a dad, as a husband, like really coming to a a knowledge and a revelation of just the Abba's heart of God. And that really has just spilled over into everything, especially my my music and my songs. And um, I'm, I'm prayerful that people begin to just have their hearts pierced with that revelation as they listen through that um that he is a good a good dad this one kind of has a uh, a rare component or maybe a collector's component you can still actually get this one on physical copy you can you, you post it, it looked like you were very proud of that layout is that um, was that your idea to still print this yeah, or did the label say let's I mean, do it the label still they we nobody really buys physical copies anymore but I still sell a ton of them. Like we get rid of a lot of them on the road when we play concerts. And I think there's still a, there's a remnant of people out there that still like to get it in their hands and, and read through the lyrics and read all the album credits. And I still like that. I'm one of those people too, but and so, yeah, apparently we're, we're rare. We're still, we're doing it. I'm signing them up and we're, we're shipping them out. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the album or the uh, title track in the album, Abel, obviously an important song. It is the title track. It's the single, mm-hmm. maybe take us inside that song a little, little bit, how it came about. Sure. You know, and I'll try to be quick, but it really comes from Ephesians, Ephesians three twenty in the Bible. And that verse says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish exceedingly and abundantly more all that we can ask or imagine. And, you know, as a young kid, I feel like that verse was really stamped on my heart from my mom and watching my mom's journey. Uh, In a nutshell, my mother was adopted and was, there's a huge story that goes behind it all, but um, she was given up for adoption as an infant and was adopted by a family in the hospital that same night um, that, had just lost their son. So their son was born, still born. He did did not make it. So they ended up taking my mom home instead. And growing up, I noticed that my mom suffered and struggled with a lot of depression and just kind of this not knowing where she came from and wondering why she wasn't wanted or where, where she belonged. And, um, when she, when I was in the eighth grade, her biological family found her um, and she had four brothers from that same young girl years later that girl went on to get married and had four sons and before she passed away she told her oldest son uh, that she had had a baby girl when she was 17 and left her in this one hospital and so that son my uncle (laughs) found her when my mom was 40 and the news station came out to interview my mom because it was like this big story for our community. We live we grew up in a tiny little farming community. And so it was just like a big deal for this story of adoption and this family finding my long lost sister, you know, and the news came out and they put a they put a camera in my mom's face and a microphone. And they said, "Mrs. Stevenson, tell us tell us how you're feeling. Describe what this feels like to find your brothers and and she quoted Ephesians 3.20, that's all she said. And that was such a beautiful moment to see her just give the glory to God in that moment. And, you know, she's just a weeping, sobbing mess, but she said he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more all that we can ask or imagine. And that was such a watershed moment of healing for her. And that's what the song is really about for me personally. That's what this record, all just entails there's a lot of themes going on but i think the the basis for everything is we have a good dad who is able to to blow our minds with his goodness and his kindness so it sounds like this song might have been in the works for a long time uh yeah it was it's an it's an oldie yeah (laughs) Yeah. 
You can finally hear it now, maybe even on your radio station. And if you're not, I guess we can tell them to give them a call and yeah. get that plan. I mean, <laughs> you can tell them that. <laughs> so this album here, you, you worked with a lot of new people. You had a lot of new collaborations and yeah. songwriters you worked with on this one. How did some of those come about? Man, just, uh, I feel like in, in this season, it was, it just felt, it felt cool to, uh, it just felt right to work with some new people and, not that I haven't it loved working with people in the past. We were everybody, we're still all super close and uh, we're everybody's really busy. I think that's a big thing is just the busyness of life. But in this, for this batch of songs in particular, um, I was just not afraid to write songs with whoever and work with whoever. And there's just so many amazingly talented writers and producers and just you know brothers and sisters in the lord who really poured into this project with me who have deep life experience who who have uh just a lot of things to share and so working with all those people has has was really special on this project in particular it's awesome as listeners go through this album give it a good good listen what's one you want to make sure they really go back and they don't skim over and they they really get the message of, of this song and don't miss it man I know all of them, I but know, there's got to be one. They're that you really all my want babies. Um, I mean, I I think "Carry Me" is is one of is one of my favorites. Um, my I think my favorite song to just that I could just listen to over and over and over is a song called "Risking It All," and that's that that's a very specific moment that happened in with my wife and myself where we came to a crossroads in our in our life we'd been married for years and we had to make a decision about our future and you you hear a song called you see the title risking it all and you think man it's going to be just maybe a heavy song but it's like it's the jam it's it's really just a a super fun song that's that's sonically just different from the anything else on the record but but talks about something really deep We'll talk about touring a little bit. You're one of the artists that over the pandemic, post-pandemic, started doing the backyard shows. <laughs> and it looks like you're still doing that. Are you going to continue just doing that until people start, stop booking you? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we'll go wherever and do whatever. We've played everywhere from dairy farms to goat ranches to veterans' homes to, to backyards to living rooms to patios and gazebos to pool decks like gravel roads behind a church on old gooseneck trailers like we it doesn't it just i don't know it doesn't matter to me anymore if people want us to come and play and have a night of of community and testimony and and music and sharing and just doing life together i i love it and um it's just been a really beautiful journey for me and a process for me to walk through is you know i've been on tour playing in arenas and major you know major events around the country for the last eight nine ten years for tens of thousands of people but there's i started i started playing open mic nights in coffee shops for tens of for, people for tens of people um and it's just honestly like i know where i come from i i'm not too proud to get in my van and go to somebody's yard where it's them and their 30 friends and they want to they want to sing and they want to have dinner and we're breaking bread and we're just being together and in in the last three years we've done 180 backyard shows if you will we've done we've done over 180 going on 200 uh private events that we have just been up close and personal and unplugged and just what you see is what you get and it's it's been life changing for me. Like I don't I don't know that I want to go back to the same way I, we used to do it all the time. So if somebody's interested in booking that, is it you're showing up with everything, the PA system? We bring you just need a, an outlet, power outlet in the backyard. We, we play Tetris in my van, and we get everything perfectly shoved in there. <laughs> we just need a an electrical outlet, and we plug it all in, and we play. And so it's they're they're really really fun. So you liked it so much that your public tour in the fall, it appears, is going to be an unplugged tour, right? Yeah. Is Gospel Nights Unplugged? Absolutely. And that's the whole heart behind, you know, we're, it's kind of grown to the point where we have so much opportunity and and we it's hard to fit, you know, 
what we're doing in sometimes into a backyard now because it's grown so much and I'm not trying to grow big, but some of these communities we're going into are, are people who we've been to their house before mm. and they're like, Hey, we want you to come back, but we want to do this for our, for our whole church, for our whole community. And so we switched it from being, it's just more than a backyard concert now, you know, it's, it's like, well, what is really the heartbeat of what we're doing? It's the gospel. It's it's unplugged. It's testimony and community and sharing. Well, how do we, what do we call that? Gospel Nights Unplugged. So oh. that's what we're doing. Well, you can get all those dates over at his website and uh, link up to stream the new album. It is out today. Uh, Abel is the name. The single is also the same name. That's on, on the radio. Good, uh, good hangout with you, Ryan. Yes, good sir. You. Thank you. Thanks for having me.